Kentucky Ancestors is brought to you with support from the Kentucky Historical Society Foundation. Today on Kentucky Ancestors, our team of experts explores the history of a 19th century Kentucky family and uncovers their connections to life along several rivers in the Commonwealth. Our family question comes from Franklin County in Central Kentucky. Join us as we share the details and explain the research methods that our experts at the Kentucky Historical Society use to document this story. Kentucky Ancestors starts now. Welcome to Kentucky Ancestors, presented by the Kentucky Historical Society. I'm your host, Heather French Henry. Join us for another episode as we reveal Kentucky's deep and diverse roots, one family at a time. This final episode of our second season is being filmed before a live studio audience of folks just like you who are interested in learning more about their Kentucky families. In the studio today is Jennifer Dean. Jennifer, it's so great to have you on the show today. Thank you. And you have brought some family with you today, so they're filling up the front row. Uh -huh. Is this a family full of Deans? It is. Oh, that's so <laughs> wonderful. Just wave hi. Look at you all, how beautiful you are. So have you always been interested in genealogy? I've always liked history, and I think uh, my grandmothers especially told a lot of stories when, about their childhood, the people they knew, and the things that they did, and I wanted to know more about those things. Well, we're going to learn a lot more today. So you submitted a question to our team about your ancestor, William Dean. So what do you know about him right off the top? Uh, I was told by my grandparents that he was on a boat on the Ohio River that sunk during the Civil War, and they said that the boat was named after him. Interesting, and he, he had a tie to the river, so that makes some of our research really pertinent. So let's begin by telling the audience a little more about William Dean. So our staff has discovered that he was born in 1844 in Frankfort, Kentucky. He lived his entire life connected to the city and actually died there in 1914. In 1868, he married a woman named Saffronia Singleton of Woodford County. Put that on your baby name list, Saffronia <laughs> Singleton, right? Together, they had several children, including your ancestor, Nathan Howard Dean. You mentioned that he was connected to work along the river. So what was William's connection to the rivers of Kentucky? So a few documents our researchers found can tell us a bit more. In the various census records during his lifetime, he was often listed as a laborer. His death certificate lists his occupation pretty clearly. So why don't you read that for us? He was a riverman and worked on steamboats. So, however, you will read what the 1880 census, which lists a different occupation for William. Can you read that? In 1880, he was working at a sawmill. Interesting, right? The, the differences, certainly. While that might not sound like river work, at the time, logs were actually floated downstream in huge rafts of connected timbers along Kentucky rivers to be processed at sawmills. In the 1914 Frankfort City Directory, William is once again listed as a laborer. However, it tells us that he worked for a certain company. Can you read the name of that company? The J.B. Blanton Company. This company is very important. So according to an oral history interview with Alice Blanton, the Blanton Company was very much connected to the river. So let's take a listen. I worked most of my working life from my father at the J.B. Blanton Company, a building material firm. He started it in 1904 and incorporated it in 1905. He had a towboat and a pump boat and barges, and it started out dredging sand out of the Kentucky River, which is fine sand and used for mortar. And he also manufactured plaster. His plaster was used in the, the new capital when it was built. My great-grandfather, who built this house, had a lumber mill. 
he quarried the stone for the old capital. Since your ancestor William was working for the Blanton Company at this time, how does it feel to know that your ancestor's work on the river actually contributed to the construction of our current Capitol building? It's interesting, I had no idea. I know, little tidbits we find, right? So you're connected, you need to go there and visit, certainly. Well, as we've already learned, the river itself provides occupational opportunities for people in many different ways. Before our first commercial break, let's learn about the river and how it influenced Kentucky communities from the Capital City Museum located in downtown Frankfurt. Frankfurt is built on two bends of the river. The first people who surveyed here also came up the river and they are responsible for what's called Lee's Town which is the first settlement in Franklin County. The man that we have to thank for the commercial use of the river is General Wilkinson. And of course, he was quite the scoundrel, but he realized that the Kentucky River fed right into the Ohio, which fed right into the Mississippi, and in a journey of probably 15 days or something like that, you could be in New Orleans. Very, very early on, the river was kind of like a creek would be. There were places where it was very shallow. And when steamboats came in about, I think 1818 was the first steamboat, they had to wait for the river to be up. And soon they learned that we needed several dams on the Kentucky River to make it navigable all the time. Later on, logging came to Eastern Kentucky and the logs were uh, rafted together. And then when we had a, a, a flood, usually in the spring, they would push those rafts into the river and ride the rafts down to Frankfurt, where we had at one time six sawmills. One time Frankfurt had 12 distilleries. Of course, many of them went out because of prohibition, but there's a lot of memorabilia there. People who, who farmed or fished or lived in houseboats along the river were always mindful of when the river was coming up. And of course, when the river would get high, it would flood. The penitentiary was built down where the state office building is. You just look at it and you know it's just, you know, a hell of a place to be. It was built on land owned by Andrew Holmes, and of course it's on Holmes Street. But it was not a very pleasant place because the prisoners were expected to work pretty hard and of course the food was very poor and sickness was rampant. Men working very hard with a poor diet, the, the health was, was very bad. The interesting thing is that the superintendent could supplement his income by these, these industries. And so if the penitentiary made money, then the superintendent made money. Hello, I'm Doug High, the director of the Kentucky Historical Society Foundation. We're a nonprofit organization that was created to support the Kentucky Historical Society and its mission to preserve and educate our shared Kentucky history in order to better meet the challenges of the future. And we do this through major gifts, grants, and endowments from groups and people just like you. Please consider a donation to the Kentucky Historical Society Foundation or by simply becoming a member at KHS. Welcome back. Before the break, we learned some of the family history of our guest, Jennifer, and how her ancestors were connected to several industries along Kentucky rivers at the turn of the 20th century. So Jennifer, you also asked us another question about your ancestor, William, and his connection to the river and the Civil War, including a story of a boating accident and the naming of a vessel in his honor. Can you share a little bit about that family story? Only what I've told you so far, and just that I know that um, they said that a boat was named after him, and I don't know anything otherwise. I've never found the boat or any information on it. Okay, well, interestingly enough, um, we have uncovered some information, but unfortunately, our researchers looked for military records associated with your William Dean, but were unsuccessful in actually linking him to military during that war. However, we did happen upon a fairly famous captain, also named William Dean, who was from Ohio and later died in Pittsburgh in 1890. 
He was also a reported shipbuilder, so perhaps there was a ship named after this gentleman or it referred to his business that he started in 1859. So this William Dean was not actually active in service during the Civil War. So as an interesting side note, the Captain William Dean that we just spoke about, um, we actually just described what was the grandfather of famed novelist and playwright William Dean Howes, also of Ohio. So Howes most notably served as an editor for the Atlantic Monthly. So still some very interesting information, just a different William Dean. So during our search for your ancestor among the Civil War records, we did uncover this very interesting anomaly in the reporting of his age, actually. So while William Dean's death certificate reported that he was born in 1844 and that he died at the age of 70 in 1914, his presence in the census records gave us a little bit of a different picture. So your ancestor, William Dean, was found in both the 1850 and 1860 census records, living with his parents, Newton and Susan. William's age was reported in 1850 as only three years old. So 10 years later, his age is confirmed in the 1860 census. So can you find his age on that census chart? 1860 census lists him as age 12. So this would mean he was only 13 when the Civil War began a year later in 1861. So this discrepancy indicates that William was more likely born in about 1847 or 48 and not in 1844, as was reported on his death certificate. But during the five years of the Civil War, he would have been between the ages of 13 and 17. The minimum age for enlistment at the time of the war was actually 18. But could William certainly have enlisted during that time in that age range? It's quite possible, certainly. So history tells us that young men under 18 signed up for service by simply lying about their age. Um, this is an image actually of a 15-year-old Civil War drummer named William Horsefall. He was from Newport, Kentucky, and he was born in 1847, about the same time as your ancestor, who was also named William, certainly. This William is actually awarded the Medal of Honor for saving an officer's life. So the question is, did your ancestor William enlist before he was of age? Well, we couldn't find any evidence that William served, but the rivers and the waterways were important to the war effort, so it's very possible that he was involved in work that actually affected the conflict in some way, certainly. So along the way, we've discovered many Dean men in central Kentucky and the Ohio River Valley areas employed in work that involved the rivers. So researching ancestors connecting to the river industry can certainly be a challenge. So for more information on how to track them down, here's the Kentucky Historical Society's Head of Library and Archives, Sherry Daniels, to tell us more. Kentucky is a land not only bordered by magnificent rivers, but also dissected by many waterways throughout. As you can imagine, these streams and rivers greatly impacted Kentucky's commerce from trade to distilling to transportation, our Kentucky ancestors took great advantage of the wealth associated with such a diverse waterway system. When researching your ancestors, pay close attention to occupations listed in the census records and city directories. There are many that may signify a connection to the rivers. Newspapers might mention your ancestor in connection to a boat, work along the river, or a river accident. As steamboats traveled the larger rivers for many decades, there were several incidents that resulted in injury or loss of life, which were often recorded in Kentucky records. Don't forget about military records, maps, and tax lists to provide even further clues about an ancestor's river profession. For more recent information regarding boats of the area, the Kentucky Historical Society Library has a collection of the Inland River Records series. And be sure to check with local repositories along those rivers. Many libraries, museums, and archives collected information about the people who were connected to river life. One large repository in our region you should check out is the Inland Rivers Library held at the Public Library of Cincinnati in Hamilton County, across the river in Ohio. Welcome back. Now, Jennifer, before the break, we discovered a little bit of a dead end in searching for Civil War records for your ancestor, William Dean. But you also asked us to find out more about his paternal lineage. Let's start with his father, Newton Dean. 
Newton Dean was born in 1825 and died in Frankfurt in 1897. We did find an actual military connection for Newton, but not from the Civil War. William's father, Newton, was a veteran of the Mexican-American War, which was fought from 1846 to 1848. And Newton enlisted in April of 1847, the same year that we believe that William was born. So at the beginning of that war in his time, he left for war and left his newborn son at home. So in 1887, Newton was granted a pension. So can you read the highlighted text? Captain George W. Daniel, claim agent, has received notice from the Commissioner of Pensions. The certificate number 884 was issued on the 16th day of May, 1887, in favor of Newton Dean, Private and Company F, 16th Regular U.S. Infantry, Mexican War, at the rate of $8 per month from the 29th of January, 1887. This is the second pension certificate granted to a survivor of the Mexican War residing in Franklin County under the act of 29th January, 1887. So pretty interesting information, right? The Mexican-American War, that's pretty important. Over the years, Newton's pension increased, which served to supplement his income. Unfortunately, on one of those paydays, Newton met a sad end. Can you read the following account from 1897? Frankfort, Kentucky, February 13th. Newton Dean, a veteran of the Mexican War, died in the city workhouse Friday morning at the hour he was to be taken before the city court to answer the charge of drunkenness. <laughs> <laughs> he received his pension money Thursday and his celebration caused heart failure. <laughs> right? I mean, a sad end, but wow, what an account. And the fact that they even reported it that way, right? <laughs> Pretty interesting. So as a final note for Newton's life, we located two additional generations going back in time. So according to our records, Newton's father was Job Dean, who was born in Maryland and married to Nancy Isabel in 1807 in Mercer County, Kentucky. So it was this Mercer County connection that helped us track down the additional documents for the Dean family. So did you know you had any connection to Mercer County? It was a possibility. We knew we, okay. researching some things, we knew that would be possible. Oh, excellent. So the final ancestor we could identify was Thomas Dean, who died in 1812 in Mercer County. But as you know, genealogy is rarely finished, uh, certainly. So it's likely that you can explore more of this family connection in the coming years. So this does conclude our research, and you wanted to know about your great-great-grandfather, William Dean, and what connections he and his family had to the rivers of Kentucky. And as we have seen, your family was directly connected to many aspects of life along the rivers of Kentucky. But unfortunately, we couldn't find any proof of a boat named after him. So how do you feel about all that we've learned today? No, I think it was very helpful, um, especially doing genealogy. You know that that is it's tough and I think any little tidbit of information you can get is useful and this really does help us advance what we knew before. Excellent and you are going to write down that name Sophronia right that's kind of like you're going to somebody in your family is going to be named Sophronia somewhere down the line I think. Well thank you so much for joining us today and we're so glad your family was here with us to share in this. Yeah thank you it was very it was great. Excellent. Well, and that brings season two of Kentucky Ancestors to an end. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to learn more about your family story, please visit the Kentucky Historical Society online or in person at our headquarters in Frankfort. For the Kentucky Historical Society, I'm Heather French Henry. here after the show of Kentucky Ancestors where we just talked to Jennifer Dean about her family lineage, but we actually discovered through some of the discovery from the Kentucky Historical Society that Robert Dean actually was excited that we made a connection with Job Dean. So Robert, can you tell us what the, the brilliant discovery was in that connection? Uh, well, Jennifer and I and another cousin of ours have been researching the family tree probably seven or eight years, and we came across uh, I came across some literature saying that we are a member of the Deans of Dorchester, 
a family from the south side of, of England, Dorchester, England, who settled here in 1663 to Chesapeake Bay in Dorchester County, Maryland. Job, we, we couldn't verify that he was the son of Rock Thomas Dean, who came from Maryland, who is a direct link to the Deans of Dorchester, which that we've been looking for that for since we've been starting. Been and I even went over to Dorchester a couple of summers ago, but knowing me, I didn't know if it was for real that we were part of that family. But today on this TV show, I just found that out. That's excellent. Now, yeah. sure, we find that out quite often, right, where these discoveries come along and it's just that one or two connections that are needed. Right, because we're so used to finding so much online, um, but we, we sometimes forget that we've got to dig right into the, the actual records, right in the libraries and archives. And actually, yeah, it was a, a will that, that established that link between Job and Thomas. And also, I'd like to point out that he worked on the river, William did. Well, all the deans were mariners. We were all river or seamen. Uh, we served in the British Navy. We built ships for the British Navy. And also we were pirateers, the real thing, pirates. And you've got the goatee to prove that too. So aye, that aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for sharing this incredible uh, discovery you. with us. And thank, thank you, Jennifer, for bringing your family. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you.